Hey, what's up guys? My name is Mora and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. Today's video, we got a new miner today. We got a new release from Kanan Avalon series. This is their 1466. They've been teasing it for the past few weeks on Twitter. It is fully unveiled. We do have the full specs, price points, and the shipping window, right? So we got the full gamut of information so we can make good comparisons and see if it looked like it's going to be worthwhile, right? So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned, all right? So let's get to it. So they've been teasing this guy on Twitter for the past few weeks. The big bit of news that they got us, that got us interested in it, was that it was going to be under 20 joules of Terra Hash, right? So their big moniker is Return of the Hash King. Um, and overall, now that we have the specs, slightly misleading. Not exactly, but we'll talk about it here in a second. So shout out to at Christian Sepp for giving us the information. He was there. He did give us a breakdown of the information. So two new models, right? One is the A1466, and this is the air-cooled model, which is the one we're interested in. 150 terahash, 21.5 joules of terahash, right? So just basing it off of that, very similar to what? That new S19 JXP from Bitmain, pretty much right on par right so overall is it crazy impressive yes and no right the what is impressive about it right because it's very similar to that so it's nothing groundbreaking nothing super crazy what is impressive though is the price right if we look here they have it listed at 1388 dollars a terahash when we break that down it comes out to right about 2100 dollars that's impressive, right? Especially considering the S19 JXP is retailing at freaking $5,000, right? So at that point, it's half. Although a lot of the online retailers have it at 4K, still it's 50% off of that, right? So that is what's extremely impressive. Um, so let's look at the other model, and this is for a liquid-cooled model. It's not a hydro model. It's a liquid-cooled, meaning you need a tank. It's going to be immersed. It's 170 tera hash, so quite a bit, little bit of increase. The benefit here, though, is the increase in efficiency. It's down to 19.5 joules of tera hash, which is pretty good. It's more expensive, though, right? Quite a bit more expensive, actually, at $18.88 a tera hash, right? So impressive, but not necessarily crazy impressive, right? To me, what's more impressive is this guy just because of the price point. The price point is what makes this thing extremely appealing right so now the huge downfall though is the shipping window right if this thing was gonna be available in like a month or currently available now bullish right definitely something to look at the problem is is that it has the same delivery window as the s21 meaning it's gonna be q1 q2 of 24 right which is code for after the having <laughs> which kind of sucks right so the benefit here though is if you're in the process of setting up like a little mini BTC mining operation. You're in the process of setting up a container, something of that sort. You're expanding and you're not going to be up until that point anyway. It's a good way to lock in that price, right? Because we don't know what's going to happen between now and then. Because remember, it's a long period. Not necessarily long, but in crypto terms, six months is a long time, right? A lot can happen between now and then. But it is a fairly solid price, right? Again, if this thing was available now... It would definitely shake things up, but the fact that that's the shipping window kind of changes things a bit, right? Um, so again, the biggest thing is just the price. The price is what's definitely appealing, and that's what I was talking about with you know the all the advertising being a little bit misleading because that's specifically for the liquid cooled model, not the air cooled model, right? So not that they were lying about it, it is true, but again, we're concerned with the air cooled model. So now, if we plug it into a calculator. Which, in a sense, is kind of pointless because, again, this thing's not going to be available to us until after the halving. But it's just to give us a ballpark of where we're at now, right? So we can compare it to the current models and what it's going to look like if the BTC price stays about the same, right? We're going to do simple math just to get an idea. But if we break it down, we throw it in here. It's 150 terahash, 3,225 watts at about $2,100, right? So this is at a 10 cent kilowatt hour. If this thing were out now, it would be somewhat profitable, right? It would be making about $1.70. But again, keep in mind, you're not going to have this thing until after the halving, right? And this is a common mistake I'm still seeing people do. Please correct them when you see this. 
they're considering the having and what they're doing is they're having your profit right so they're saying that instead of making a dollar 70 cents a day you're going to be making 85 cents a day no no what's having is your income is your daily revenue it's the yield that you're getting right because by doing that you're saying your electric is also having it is not right so what you're having is your income and then you're still subtracting your full electric and then that gives you your profitability right so just eyeballing this half of 944 would be what four dollars and 75 cents your electric being seven dollars and 75 cents so you would be at a three dollar loss right so we wouldn't be at 85 cent profit we'd be at a three dollar loss per day right so this is going to be what you'll be making after the halving but a lot of things to consider right it's not that simple either when it comes to that because what's going to happen a lot of retail a lot of the guys with higher electric or the guys with older inefficient hardware are going to unplug and the difficulty will adjust right so that doesn't necessarily mean that although we plug it into the calculator that's what it'll make that's not necessarily a true representation because again the hash rate will find that equilibrium and then we will find out what's going on right but initially those first few days yes it will be at the three dollar day loss if the price remains the same and the difficulty remains the same. But again, if we have a dip or again, just all the inefficient hardware unplugging, it is going to change, right? Hopefully for the better. Hopefully we get to that point where it can become break even, which is possible, right? Because there's a ton of inefficient hardware and the winners, at least for that time, right? Six months after the halving, it's going to be the guys with the most efficient hardware, right? So the guys with the old inefficient like S19s, S9s, S17s, etc., etc. et cetera, et cetera most likely will be unplugged but the guys who will be running the network are those mining companies with that two cent electric and potentially maybe retail with seven cent electric and a really efficient hardware right but again kind of early to speculate on that we'll see when the time comes but in reality it's not going to be a fun time right for btc mining unless something drastic happens and the bull run starts early, which has been kind of my theory a little bit just because of the potential ETF approvals by then, the Fed pivoting, et cetera, et cetera, a ton of stuff. But again, I try to go mainly by the cycles, right? I just prepare myself for different potential possibilities. So overall, not looking too great. If we compare it to the other model, right? This is their other previous big dog, the A1366, which isn't a bad unit either, right? If we look at it, it's 130 terahash at about the same wattage. So the new guy is just more efficient, essentially, right? Instead of being 25 joules of terahash, it's about 15% more efficient down to 21.5, right? And this is going to be what's kind of different also about this cycle is that the chips have gotten to the point where they're not such an extreme upgrade every cycle, right? It is very likely that although there's going to be that time after the halving where things are going to be profitable, once we're in full swing, if we do get the price appreciation we're expecting, which is at least, let's say, a 3x for BTC, it's very likely that the S19s from the previous cycle will still be fully relevant, right? And that's going to kind of be a difference because a lot of the hardware hasn't had that crazy exponential gain in technology that we have seen previously, right? So like even these guys are going to do fairly well, right? And the same for the any of the S19Js, even those like smaller 90 terahash models, et cetera, et cetera. So it's going to be, it'll be interesting, right? So like even looking at this guy, again, it's not that big of a gain over this. Right, so we'll see where the price points on this thing land. To me, what's most interesting about this news is what happens with the price of this guy, right? The fact that the new one is going to be 2K. Are they going to lower this price? Potentially, but maybe not just because, again, that thing's not going to ship until anywhere from like February to like May of next year, right? Because currently this guy is around the street price is about 2800 bucks, right? So that would be appealing, right? If these guys were to drop a bit. But realistically, it's too close to the price of like the bit mains and the what's miners, especially like the what's miners, which tend to be more highly regarded on the reliability scale, right? That would it's what would keep me kind of iffy about the Canons or any of these is that parts availability, repair availability is going to be a little bit more limited versus the what's miners and the bit mains, right? So just something to factor in. But if the price is good enough, it's definitely something to consider because, again, they have been around a long time. Reliability seems to be somewhat good from the few people I've heard talk about them. But again, I don't really have personal experience, so I can't really talk about them too much other than the fact of the knowledge I have of the what's miners and the bit mains, right? 
Um, so overall, the biggest thing again is the price, but it's just the factor you gotta factor in that the, the shipping window is gonna be so far out, right? A lot can happen between now and then, so it's hard to really say. But again, if it's something where you're not going to be live until that point anyway, maybe it's something to think about. Um, once we get real price points for the S21, that'll give us an even better window as to what's going on. Um, but the one benefit is that the fact that we're being able to see into the future that far ahead, it's kind of giving us insight as to what's viable now. Right. So that's kind of the cool thing is that by seeing what's already out there, it kind of gives us an idea of what's going to be relevant and potential price points for what is now. Right. I'll kind of do a video waiting for the S21 price point. So that way it'll give us a really good idea if any of the buys currently now are really good buys, if they're so-so buys, we'll kind of compare and contrast from there. But um, but yeah, guys, overall, I think this to me would be the biggest thing, at least in the short term, is to see if we have price drops on these guys right especially right now i've been waiting for prices to change a bit right normally i would be doing my asic pricing update but nothing has really changed right i'm kind of waiting to see if we get a news on the s21 and if that affects prices or if prices update from this current bearish trend that we're in right pretty much the prices are still from where we're at 30k they haven't readjusted yet so i'm kind of waiting on that just to see where we go and ultimately see if we get cheaper hardware, right? Which is the goal. It's just not looking too great so far, right? But um, I'll keep uh, you posted. I'll definitely be looking because it is something I'm eyeing, right? I do still potentially want a BTC miner. Will I get one of these newer ones? Or shout out to Coastal Crypto. If any guys are interested, they do have a group buy on a bunch of like the 90 terahash models. I think they have them at like 650 shipped. That's like super intriguing again follow them on twitter or hit them up in discord if you're interested in those i'm not trying to show them or anything it's just a really good price for a miner that will likely be relevant and you'd probably be able to sell for 3x in the bull run right so just stuff to think about again i'll do another video that's a little more comprehensive comparing the really the big models but this is just to give you an idea of what's going on with this new model here but again the thing that sucks is just that shipping window so far out right um, but let me know guys let me know if you're interested in this model or if you have one of these guys if you if you guys have an avalon let me know how it's been reliability how it's been for parts repair it's not one not too many people talk about i haven't really seen a whole lot of info on them it's really just bitmain and what's minor right um, but let me know in the comments guys let me know what you think thank you for watching guys please comment like and subscribe guys and i am out